sack of fresh carbon. What am I supposed to do with a bag of carbon? Okay, you can work with this. I guess this means time to uh finally release the Wild Willy frame. We are finally, after months and months, releasing this frame. The Wild Willy Dolphin One frame. Produced by Flight One. Uh, me and Preston have been working together on the design and manufacturing of this frame for probably six months now, it seems like. Today is the day it is going up for pre-order. Keep in mind there will be a link in the description down below. You can go ahead and get your pre-order in. But before, before you go ahead and get it, convince you why you need it. It is the absolute best possible. Go on. I mean, nothing, be it's nominal best thing ever. I need it! But seriously, this frame, I've had a lot of work put into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick overview and a breakdown of the frame and kind of all the little features, all the stuff, all the duvalackies that it's got in it. So you guys can make up your mind if you would like one of these or if you'll go fly something dumb. I don't know, like anything other than this. Well, let's start with the basics. First off, this is a base five inch freestyle frame. It does run six inch props natively. Um, I actually can just slap six inch props on this as is right now and it will fly. So I believe it's about 230 to 240 millimeters um, motor to motor. I like having the motors slightly further apart than like the minimum required distance. Um, it actually helps with the stability of the drone when you're freestyling. Technically, it adds sort of like a natural D term to roll and pitch, but that is for a later video. I can talk to you guys about how that natural damping works. Even though it is a freestyle frame, I am running the thinner arms that most race frames usually run. I realized I never ever break arms, and so I decided to make the arms skinnier but they're thicker vertically. So they're five millimeter arms, and I believe they're about eight millimeters uh, across. And I've actually only broken one arm, which is this little odd colored one. It uh, didn't get the paint tune up after it got swapped out, but um, they actually hold up way better than I expected. And also, I'm a firm believer, if you were to break anything on a mini quad, it's gonna be the arm. The arm should be disposable. I would rather break an arm than a motor. It's like three dollars and it's two bolts. You just pop it out, pop it out, and just replace an arm. It takes two minutes and they're super cheap. I would rather break an arm than a motor, ESC, flight controller, anything else. Let the arm takes the beating. That being said though, these have held up actually better than I expected. So it's a nice little surprise I got with that. Moving on. Another key feature for the frame is that it actually has slots on the top plate for toilet tank battery mounting or normal battery mounting. I personally fly toilet tank all the time. I don't know why anyone would not fly it. I think it just flies better pretty much every way. Also, another video I'll talk about toilet tank and why it flies better. Toilet tank battery mounting, if you want to be weird, you can mount it the other way, but I, I don't know why you would want to. Also, the frame has a built-in GoPro mount, so you can actually get this 3D printed mount, which is what I've been using, um, and I actually mount my Crossfire antenna along the side of it. I actually got that from, I think, JZ FPV, I saw he did it, so I think it's an idea. It's an awesome way to mount that. I actually finally stopped killing Immortal T antennas. But yeah, so the GoPro mount actually just bolts directly onto the side. There's some standoffs in here, and there's one kind of back underneath you guys can't really see, but um, it's kind of like a built-in GoPro carrier. But this GoPro case isn't what comes with its standard. There's actually two little side plates that actually have a variable angle, so you can mount your Session or your Hero 5, 6, or Hero 7 now. You can actually loosen the screws on the standoffs right there, and it's got a little plate which you can adjust the angle of tilt of the GoPro. So. I like to run really flat tilt, so it's super easy for me to flatten it out. People like to run 45, 50 camera tilt, loosen the two bolts up really fast, slam that plate up a bit, 
tighten them back down and you're good to go. Um, I really liked having a quick, easily changeable mount where you could change the GoPro angle because everyone flies different angles and I hate having like really weird hacky solutions like adding foam underneath to get their edges. Just have it built in. So I like having the whole GoPro thing kind of be like a built-in solution. Moving on, uh, it can hold a full-size camera, it can hold the mini-size camera, and it can hold the micro-size camera with an adapter. Um, the adapters will be sold separate, I believe. If not, you will be able to purchase them very soon from the Flight One website as um, a quick little add-on. You can also always bolt it to the hole in the bottom plate, which is what I did uh, for my other original build with this. The FPV camera mount also does have uh, the hole and the slots in the side for the adjustable angle. I believe it goes from 20 to about 65 degrees of camera tilt, and it does lock by tightening the bolts down. It's not like the Alien where it actually has each individual degree marker, but once you tighten those bolts down, your camera is not going anywhere. And it has two different slot patterns, so it can hold pretty much any kind of camera with any casing and any bolt hole pattern. So don't worry about your camera not being able to work with the slots on the side of this. Another big thing is that this frame supports both 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 mounting and it has two mounting positions like the Schizo Nova frame. So you have the dead center of the frame mounting like most normal quads. You mount your 4-in-1 ESC, you mount your PDB, you mount your flight controller there. But it also has on the very back part you can see a bolt hole pattern there you come out 30 by 30 or 20 by 20 in the back as well. So you can really add a lot of extra room and utilize that back space. So you can put your ESC, for example, in the dead center of the frame. You could put your flight control in the back. You can do 20 by 20. You can do 30 by 30. You can do anything. Also, another quick little feature I like to add is that it only has five structural standoffs that you have to take off if you would like to take the top plate off. I'm a huge fan of not having lots of nuts and bolts all over the place. So I wanted to have the minimal amount of standoffs possible to get inside and mess with the internals. So you have the normal four bolts right around the flight controller stack, and then you've got only one single standoff in the back, kind of like how the BRAF does it. Personally, I use the 3D printed piece. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I use that blue little 3D printed piece to hold the SMA from my Unify on the back. Hold it right out of the back just like that. So yeah, pretty sleek little frame. Um, I'm actually not sure of the frame weight. I believe this guy with a Hero 6 and a 1500 milliamp 4S pack, it's running at about 680 grams all of weight. This guy has been my beater for a couple months now. It has held up so well, it's so easy to work on. Also, this frame is not a true X. It is a slight H, and that's to get the props out of the view of the GoPro, because I hate props in view. The H actually helps get those props out of the field of view of the GoPro, which is awesome. Just makes the video look a lot cleaner. Also, this is a slightly slammed style top plate. It's running 28 millimeter standoffs across the board for everything, so there's no weird different sizes of um, standoffs for stuff. It's just every standoff on this frame 28 millimeter. I like having the battery slightly lower and closer to the prop plane. That mixed with the toilet tank really kind of helps it feel a lot more solid when I'm flying it. I think going all the way down to like a 15 millimeter top plate, the frame kind of feels really robotic in the air. It doesn't kind of feel like it's got that character to it like, like the Alien and the, the Astro X have. Uh, so yeah, as of now, this frame is officially up for pre-order on the Flight One website. It will be available in other retailers soon. So if you just wanna go ahead and get it ASAP Rocky, follow the link in the description, pre-order one of these bad boys, and I forgot to tell you guys the best part. The price of the frame is only $74.69. It is a $75 price point frame. I don't think there are any other frames of this quality out there at that price point. It's the same build quality and level of carbon, but at a very cheap price point. So yeah, I hope you guys like how the frame looks, hope you like the specs of it, and I really hope you all get to get your hands on this. So go ahead, follow that link in the description below. Go ahead, either pick one of these up or get one on pre-order. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.